Why don't you run for office? Would you vote for me? Yes, I'd vote. Well, I'd vote for you on the butt alone, according to you. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? I need to get a deal with Skechers. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, they get rid of Kim Kardashian. <laughs> so glad to have this next guest. Actually, one of the first guests I think we have had on Lotter with Crowder. But it was a while ago, and we were new. We were still kind of getting our sea legs, and she was very tolerant. Fox News contributor. You can read her column at the Washington Times every Thursday. I believe I have that right. Monica Crowley, thank you so much. Hey, Stephen. Always great to be with you. Well, come on. Let's not lay it on too thick right to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> we had you to re- the best. Right. Yes, there is no human who has accomplished more than me. We had to move this a, a, a bunch of times. So y- you were saying you just – why is your schedule so hairy right now? Is it because of the debates and all the, the whole controversy with Fox News and Trump? What is it? Well, you know, it's funny. Every August, you think August is going to be sort of calm and relaxing and, and less stressed than the rest of the year, and it's so not true. Right. <laughs> Remember, World War I started in August, the guns of August. Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait on August 2nd. Things happen in August. And this year, we've had very interesting domestic developments, haven't we, with the rise of Donald Trump and the debate and the controversies, and I think some of the behind-the-scenes shenanigans happening on the Democratic side with Hillary, Obama, and the Democratic race. So there are a lot of things that are keeping me running. This is true. Okay, so right off the bat, I know you've, you've, you're you've pretty even-handed, but people always want to take one soundbite. Are you a Trump fan? Is that your guy, or are you waiting to see it all play out? I, I would put it this way. I have been giving Donald Trump the benefit of the doubt. I wouldn't say I'm a Trump fan or supporter, per okay. se, but I think that he has tapped into something really important here. He's giving voice to, I think, what remains of the Tea Party, normal Americans who just want to take their country back and make America great again, his slogan. It's simple, but it's powerful. And Trump, who is a fighter, who is an extremely successful businessman, so his last name, Trump, is shorthand for the American dream, who also gives off a blue-collar vibe, even though he's worth $10 billion, I think there are so many things that have gone into the Trump phenomenon that if the other candidates were intelligent, and that's a big if, uh, they would be taking notes. They'd be paying close attention to not Donald Trump's style, per se, or the fact he wears the trucker hat and he does all these things that are, you know, wild, right. but, but pay close attention to what he is conveying out there that is gaining him so much traction. Yeah, um... It's funny you mentioned the blue-collar vibe. I always sort of felt that way when I was at Fox News. You have these hosts making these huge salaries, and they're looking out for the folks. I'm like, you haven't met a folk in 40 years. I have not had that sal- I mean, I could walk away from the table forever if he had Trump's kind of money. He did file Chapter 11 four times and then said he didn't file personal bankruptcy. Uh, here's my issue with the Trump thing. First off, I'm not a Trump guy. I'm not convinced, right? This is just my personal opinion. It has nothing to do with where we're going to go with this. Um, when you have the Clintons sit front and center at your wedding, when you supported abortion, when you were pro-gun control, and it's like, what's the, the, the flash of genius moment for me is what I'm waiting for. I'm not saying I couldn't possibly be convinced to go Trump. But, you know, if someone invents something, right, there's actually a great film about this called Flash of Genius. They can pin down to everyone who's either invented something or had some great epiphany, what they call the flash of genius moment, where they say, when did you hit this point in your life? When did you create this idea? And I was waiting for that from Trump on the when he became conservative, why when he became a Republican, and we didn't really get it. Um, so that was for me with that. But there is a really weird shakeout, and I know you have to be careful because you work there, but you guys must feel the grassroots that have, frankly, a lot of them have turned on Fox News with the Megyn Kelly Trump thing. A lot of them are really irritated. What's that like still being in the, uh, under the Fox umbrella as that's going down? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it has calmed down um, since it first broke on Friday and and going into the weekend. I think a lot of it has calmed down. But I think a lot of the Fox audience is the Tea Party crowd. It is, you know, normal Americans in middle America who have nowhere to go in the media except Fox News and count on Fox News not to to carry the water of the conservative movement, but to at least be fair, okay? And for all these years, Fox has, and I think the impression out there, fair or not, was that some of the questions for Trump about going bankrupt, about the women's issues and everything else, were unfair because they weren't focused on the issues. The other candidates got issues-oriented questions on ISIS, on reforming Social Security, on dealing with Iran. 
and and Trump was was fending off these questions that were personal in nature. Now you can say, listen, if you're running for president, you have to take all comers. You have to be willing to answer every question, and I totally agree with that. I'm right. just saying that that I think for a lot of viewers, Trump looked like he was being singled out right. for attack on on things that were not related to issues that most Americans really care about. Right. I understand where you're coming from, and I understand where they're coming from, but I think it's, you know, we've always talked about this. I even have a stand-up bit about this, how no one is going to be able to run for president in a couple of decades because all of them have had a Facebook account. They've all been on message boards. Really, you want to run for president? Sweet Cherry 69 at Yahoo.com. Did you not, in (laughs) fact, write that this fart montage was of epic win on the... I mean, you know, there's no way it can happen. We're kind of hitting the first time we've seen a reality show president, the reality TV you know what? I, I think that's true, but I think running for president has been American Idol for a long time. Certainly Good point. Since, yeah, since the advent of television, when my old boss had the first televised debate in 1960 against JFK, Nixon versus JFK. It is all image. It's charisma. It's it's enthusiasm. It's, it's Right, passion. but my point, was, my point was the questions, I feel, if it felt like they were singling out Trump, it's because he's been so out there in the public. I mean, that's how he's made most of his money, right? He really became more successful as a business person after a Apprentice took off, and that allowed him to leverage it. And I'm not begrudging him at all, but that's a big part of what makes up the the Trump brand. Not so much with, say, a Cruz or a Fiorina or maybe a Ben Carson. So, wouldn't it be incredibly fair to ask that, since that's how he's made so many of his bones? Look. Every question to me, if you're running for president, you better be prepared for all of it. Right. I, I make no excuses for any question. You get a question, you know how to answer it, or at least should at that level. Take Donald Trump, the persona, out of it for a second, and I know that's hard because he's such a big personality. <laughs> but I've identified three things, Stephen, of what he is doing and saying, the subtext of what he is doing out there that I think are critical, apart right. from him. The first is that the American people are sick and tired of being called the enemy in their own country. If you don't agree with the leftist agenda, you're a racist, sexist, homophobe, Islamophobe, a bigot. You know this better than anybody because you write and do things about this all the time. Oh, sure. The American people are saying... Wait a minute, we're not the enemy in our own country. We have actual enemies who are here and abroad. We're not it. Trump champions America, and he champions Americans, and he's saying, no, you guys aren't the enemy. That's number one. Number two, his catchphrase, you're fired, that is the subtext of everything he's doing and saying out there. Because it's at the GOP establishment, you're fired. Right. It's to the lamestream media, you're fired. It's to the leftists in the White House and, and uh, running the country right now, you're fired. That's a very powerful thing as well. And the second thing is, he has literally stated the most important, made the most important statement in this entire campaign when he said, I'm rich. I'm really rich. Because after decades, and certainly in the last seven years, of the wealthy being demonized and achievement being demonized, he goes out there, unlike Mitt Romney, and has unapologetically said, yeah, I'm rich, and I embrace it. And you know what? I want an America where everybody can make $10 billion. I'm telling you, Stephen, that is an incredibly powerful pull. So you can say what you want about Trump and, and oh, he's a clown and whatever, and try to dismiss him. Oh, I've not said close, that. I'm the clown. Attention, but pay close attention to those three things because they're incredibly powerful pulls on the voters. I think they are. I think a big part of it, I think, like you've said, he's a symptom. He's a symptom right now of something the Republican Party has created. And I get that. They're upset. And, and that's why, listen, I understand why, again, I understand we have to be careful since you I understand why a lot of people are upset with Fox News. I, I think they see it. You know, listen, it's no secret that cable isn't really doing that well for anybody. And I think they've seen it go a little bit more centrist or appear that way. And they feel like Fox News has been pushing Jeb Bush. Now, having worked there, I know they don't have a secret meeting behind anyone's back and say, we're pushing Jeb, see? But they feel that way. And so they see Fox now as more of an establishment kind of centrist Republican uh, network, and they see them trying to necess- trying to, to, to force Trump out. So I can understand why people feel that way. I think he's a symptom of people who are really tired of the status quo with politics. Now, that yes. being said, I find it ironic that what's sort of, you know, in order to attack what they see as a centrist sort of semi-liberal network now, which is absurd, they've needed a full-on card-carrying Democrat until 2008 and Donald Trump to do it. So I understand the dialogue that needs to take place. I just think it's taking place for all the wrong reasons right now, and, and, and not a lot 
it's not being very productive. The, the Kelly Trump thing just seemed to me like it was incredibly unproductive. Is that just me? No, I agree with you. I think it was a big distraction. I think it wasted a lot of time on all fronts. Things happen. You get the you get these, and I mean we're we're all on Twitter, right? You you get these little flashpoints. You get these dust storms that happen and sort of consume everybody for a day or two days or a couple of days, and then they die down and go away, and you're on to the next dust storm. That's what I think that was. But set apart again the specifics of Trump and what just happened there. Sure. They want a fighter. Show me somebody who's going to push back. When Trump said, hey, if the Black Lives Matter folks try to try to step on me and take my podium on my mic, I'm fighting back. That's the kind of thing people want to see. You mentioned Jeb Bush. Jeb Bush, you could physically see him recede on that stage that night. Scott Walker, too. God love him. I mean, I, I admire Walker so much that he could, he could go all the way. But right. Walker, they, they're so low-key. They don't show any energy. Voters now are, are like, oh, my God, okay, so we've been through the wars of Bush, and now we've been through the wars of Obama. We're exhausted. We want somebody to do the fighting for us. And that's why Trump has tapped into that. Like him or not, agree with him or not, he's going to have to flesh out his positions on all these issues. I, I, I'm totally with you on that. But it's the bigger vibe he's putting out there where he's, he is finally standing up for the country and for well, normal, I understand regular that. Americans. But do you think that maybe, do you think, considering how inconsistent he's been, I mean, just wo woefully so, um, do you think that maybe he understands what you're talking about from a business sense and is using it to help Trump as opposed to maybe actually really trying to spearhead a new conservative movement? I'm not saying that's the case, but wouldn't that be a valid criticism considering he's been so... I mean, he has yet to really attack Hillary Clinton. Certainly not like Fiorina or someone like Oh, Cruz. no, I, I disagree with you. He's the only one out there calling her a criminal. I, I no, I, I look. They've all attacked Hillary in different ways. Carly Fiorina said that she has lied about Benghazi, lied about the server, and now we've got the FBI launching a full-on investigation. They, they have been criticizing her, but I think Trump goes right out there and literally called her a criminal, <laughs> basically said she should be in jail. But the, look, Donald Trump. I don't know whether he's got the the fire in the belly to go all the way, or or you know can can keep from really stepping in it, going all the way. But what I do see, Stephen, is a real change in the dynamic out there, where when you yes. say, well, we don't know if he's a conservative. He's been Democrat before. He's given to Democrats. All that is true. And as a conservative, I don't necessarily trust his instincts. I mean, he said he would fund partially Planned Parenthood. Okay, I got a big problem with that. Yeah. But I also think that a lot of people don't care. I think a lot of people are like, you know what, I don't care. I just want somebody who's going to fight for me. Yeah, I don't think you will. will. I think he fights for Trump. That's my issue. I don't think he'll fight for anyone I, I gotta but Trump. i got to disagree with you there, too, because I know him a little bit. Not well, but I know him a little bit. And I know he loves this country, body and soul. He is a true See, American that's the patriot. issue. And I think that's the issue. And I, I don't say this because, I, sweetheart, I love you. But I think that's the issue people have with media is people saying, well, because I know Trump, because I know, listen, we know that half of these candidates are golfing buddies with executives at Fox. Okay, let's just be real here. I think that's a big part of what people don't like. And they feel like Trump is exposing it a little bit. You know, when he says he buys off politicians right. and he's proud of it, he exposes it. But the fact is, he's exposed. Anytime you see someone expose something, you know, this working in media, often they're exposing something so that they're hiding something else. And Trump doesn't <laughs> talk about his cozy relationships with people over there at maybe Fox News, at CNN, and we all know he has them. You know him personally, but of course, uh, I know you to be an ethical uh, journalist. I don't know that everyone on either side is. We have to go to a break, and I want to bring you back because uh, I like what you have to say. I dig it. Monica Crowley, louder with Crowder. Stay tuned. We are back with Fox News contributor, uh, Washington Times columnist. You can read them Thursdays and also follow her on Twitter. Monica Crowley, thanks for being back. Um, all right, I, I hear where you're coming from on Trump, and I agree with you on a lot. I think the issue, we're kind of getting into Sarah Palin territory, where there's no room for an in-between for a critical look. Either people are all in for Trump, and, I mean, if I say anything about Trump, the tweets are, so you love Bush and you think Obama's done a great job? I've been critical of Jeb for a long time. I'm not a fan of him. I don't even know if I'd vote if it were Jeb Bush. Frankly, I honestly don't. Um, do you feel like we've hit that ground, like Sarah Palin, where either everyone is all in or people can't stand them, there's no room for in between? 
I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'd go that far. I do see the emotional reactions to Trump. Um, and, and certainly when this whole thing came down, another weird dynamic happened where you had a lot of women, including black women, defending Trump and pushing back on Megyn Kelly and saying, leave Trump alone kind of thing. But like that old Britney Spears. Uh, oh, yeah. I, those guy, two women were hilarious. Yeah. I leave love them. Britney alone. You know, leave Donald Trump alone. Chris Meanwhile, Crocker. Yeah. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton was defending Megyn Kelly. So there are very weird dynamics and weird bedfellows um, going on here. And people do feel emotionally invested in this race because I think a lot of voters feel like this is the last chance. You know, we've been saying this for a couple of election cycles now, but I think probably this one is it, because if you don't have a uh, a conservative in there, even a Republican. I mean, Jeb, to me, is the worst possible candidate you can put up. Yep. But if he's the nominee, I will vote for him because this is last chance station. If you don't repeal and reverse pretty much everything Obama has done, then the country is gone. Well, that's a perfect example right there, right? A pivotal issue is uh, the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, as people right. call it. Um, Trump's the only one on that stage who unapologetically said that he thought single payer socialized health care worked great in Canada. Then he regurgitated some old, tired talking point from Republican Party about across state lines. But the fact remains, he genuinely thinks that single payer socialized health care is a good thing in several countries. And he hasn't walked that back. Being from Canada, I'm going, we're talking about him making a menstruation maybe joke about Megyn Kelly when he just supported socialized health care, said it worked. That is such a deal breaker to me. I'm amazed nobody else is really talking about it. Yeah, I know. Again, I think at this early stage, people don't care much. They will. OK, that that will turn, you know, when people right. start to get really serious about casting their vote, people are invested in their vote. It's like spending money. Your vote is like a hundred dollar bill. You know, you're not going to just lay it down willy nilly. You're going to know what you're buying here. Sure. So I think that will change. But as of right now, people don't really care. And, and this is but that's hypocrisy vibe. and that's hypocrisy. And that's why and that's why I, I, I don't do any media outside of my own anymore. I genuinely feel like the conservative base can be just as easily manipulated as the leftist base right now. Now, when they made the whole thing about Obamacare, bumper stickers everywhere, no Obamacare, all this stuff, all the silly nicknames, right? And I was the first, I was at a tea party, I spoke at the very first tea party with Michelle Malkin. I was a supporter of it. I wouldn't necessarily consider myself a part of it. But when no Obamacare, that's the biggest issue. And then they say, well, now we don't care if, if Donald Trump supports even more liberal health care than Barack Obama. That, to me, shows an inconsistency of, I think, a contingency of people who, frankly, are, are, are being manipulated. Well, I, hate I, to say I, th- I I think you're thinking too much about this right now because I don't <laughs> think I think you really I, I think they're not responding to to his issue positions yet. They're he doesn't they're have responding one. To, right, and that will that will become it become clear, and then people will take second looks at other candidates, and and it will wash out the way it's supposed to wash out. But what I'm saying is, right now they're responding to something else, yeah. and it's not that they're being bought. I mean, you know, the Tea Party crowd. I do have spoken at Tea Party. These are normal Americans who want somebody who's actually going to stand up and fight. Ted Cruz has stood up on Obamacare sure. and fought and took all the slings and arrows from his own side, his own leadership, the media, the left, the Democrats. I mean, you name it, and he's still standing. I, I think. I think Ted Cruz is actually very smart to hang out in the draft of Donald Trump and be the only one not critical of him. Because the more they pile on Trump, the more his numbers go up. People feel like they want to defend him. But Cruz has been very smart. He's saying, no, this is foolish. Pay attention to what he's creating out there and what he's tapping into. I, I think Cruz is actually handling this in the smartest way because he actually is the fighter, along with Scott Walker. They right. have proven records of standing up to the left and fighting back. That's what voters want. And I think once the Trump phenomenon becomes less of a novelty and more of like a standard issue thing in the campaign, then Cruz and Walker, I think, will be the beneficiaries. I, I think – that's what the Republican primary voters want. I think when it comes to a general, people want someone who they feel is strong in leadership and is an effective communicator. And and that's the issue I think Ted Cruz is going to have. He, Despite, and I love the guy, I've known Ted Cruz, my family lives in Texas for a long time when he was you know getting started. I know the people who work with him. Um, I just can't get past the Mr. Rogers delivery that people, when you look at national polls, feel is a little disingenuous. So I think we need to separate maybe right now what is necessary for these primaries. And I think Trump is tapping into something versus who's going to beat Hillary Clinton. And I think that narrows the field a little bit. Um, I I think, listen, there are a lot of things with which I disagree with her. As a matter of fact, you know who I think was handling this really well was Carly Fiorina uh, until the Megyn Kelly thing. 
I would have gone a different angle as a woman with that because there is such a large contingency of people who are so tired with feminism that I think they just rejected and went after Megyn Kelly, period, because they're tired of anyone playing those cards. And right. I think she waded into that a little bit, Carly, and I think she would have been better to attack Trump's manhood um, because then you'd see him fly off the handle and yell all kinds of misogynistic epithets where he would he would be off the rails. But, um, <laughs> you know, imagine if someone just came out and said, well, if Donald Trump can't handle these kinds of questions from Megyn Kelly, I guess I, Carly Fiorina, am more of a man than Donald Trump to run for president. Oh, effing blah, blah, blah. You know that would happen, and I would pay a nickel to watch that wrestling match at uh, at Raw. Um, I, I agree with you. They're not attacking Trump doesn't serve any purpose. Perry might have killed his chances doing that. It just doesn't look good for anyone right now. You know, if you say something about Trump, we've noticed that with the website. Uh, we can't post all pro-Trump stuff because I'm not huge on Trump. But if we post anything critical, people just say you're a rhino and they turn on you. Why do you think Cruz is the only one who sees that? Well, I, you know, he's a brilliant guy, so I think he understands what's going on here. He's also totally plugged into the conservative base, the Tea Party, the evangelicals, and he, he knows what they're thinking. Everything that I laid out to you earlier in this interview about being turned into the enemy in their own country and, and wanting to fire the GOP leadership and the media and the left and the Democrats, all the things that, that Trump is giving voice to, Cruz understands, and Cruz has been doing it. This whole time. So I think what he knows is, look, Donald Trump is not somebody who's going to be pushed out of this race. One second. Hold that thought. We have to do this break. You know these damn commercial breaks. Keep the lights on. Monica Crowley, brilliant, also an attractive blonde who works at Fox News. Stay tuned. She has to leave soon. So Monica Crowley, Fox News contributor, is here. Monica, sorry to take up so much of your time. Um, okay. You wanted to finish the thought you were making about Trump. Um, I forgot it. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm These commercials. This is why people hate. I'm sorry I spaced out. Oh, I think what I was saying was um, about Ted Cruz sort of maximizing what, what Trump is, is um, onto here. And I think that the others basically should get out of the way, let Trump make the path for them, but yes. understand what he's doing here and back off the criticism. Leave the guy alone, um, like that Britney Spears uh, YouTube Crocker. thing. Yeah, and it will, it will redound to He's masculine now. Did you know that? Chris Crocker, he he was like yeah. full on looked like a woman, and now he's gone back to looking like a guy, and he's he's I guess sort of ge ge well not gender fluid, he's sexual orientation fluid. Oh, I, don't I did not know that. Oh, by the way, I know what I wanted to say now. You're gender um, fluid. You <laughs> no, I'm not. I am definitely a girl. Okay. Um, you mentioned Hillary Clinton running against Hillary. She's not going to be the nominee. No, you I think it's Sanders? I no. I wrote a column two weeks ago saying that what is happening here is that Barack Obama is taking Hillary Clinton out. And I recommend my column to everybody in the Washington Times that ran two weeks ago. It's so called is Obama taking Hillary out. And what is happening now with this DOJ investigation, the FBI now serving, uh, seizing her server and her emails and the thumb drives, that investigation would not be going forward if Barack Obama didn't want it to go forward. As we know from the IRS investigations, the True. VA investigations, Obama stops anything that he doesn't want moving forward. He wants this investigation. He loathes the Clintons. He wants her out because he needs a successor who will give him a third term. He needs somebody he can control. And no, it's not Bernie Sanders. It's Joe Biden. I lay, lay out the entire scenario mm. about how Barack Obama's taken her out, he's doing her in, and he is going to support his own vice president, giving him the full weight of the White House, all of the technical infrastructure that they used in 08 and 12, the social media and all the rest of it. Hillary Clinton has been begging for that for seven years. He refused to turn it over to her, and now we know why. They're sounding a little bit uh, fluoride in the tap conspiracy theory-ish, but... I think you're right. I do. I, I think it's actually probably a good read. I don't know that it'll necessarily work, though. Uh, I don't know that Biden. I, I tell you what, though, if the nominees become Donald Trump and Joseph Biden <laughs> as a comedian, there is nothing that I would want more than that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think our country would go to hell in a handbasket. I think it would be such a fun debate to watch. Um, I can't even get my head around it. Gosh, I guess <laughs> then maybe VPs would be like Bernie Sanders versus Fiorina. I would just, oh, I would murder no, for yeah. them.
You know what the de- I know it would be so delicious, but you know what the Democratic ticket is going to be? It's going to be Joe Biden because Obama's going to back Biden, and he's going to make it clear to minority voters that Biden is his guy, so he will get the black vote, the Latino vote, and everything. They will follow Obama's lead. Yeah. And the vice president, because if they they Castro. marginalize Hillary with um, with an indictment or a special prosecutor, whatever they're going to do, um, they're going to need to make it up to women. So it's going to be Elizabeth Warren. Oh we'll have God. A Biden Warren. Ticket. Elizabeth Warren makes it up to women, and she makes it up to the far left. Mark my words, you heard it here first on Ladder with Crowder. <laughs> the seventh ticket will be Biden Warren. I was going to say Satan, but I guess the two are interchangeable at well, this point. Well, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. redundant. I feel like I feel like Warren has Satan on the red the red devil phone. You know, just she just <laughs> sends out the Satan signal to the sky, like there's a baby. Oh, let's kill it. Um, Speed dial. Yes, exactly. Elizabeth Warren. Gosh, gosh, and I always used to get her messed up with uh, with just in my brain of Debbie Wasserman and Schultz. And I know they look nothing alike, but so many of their stories were so interchangeable for a while where in my head I'd go, now which which cackling, shrill, evil broad said this? Go through my mental Rolodex. Oh, 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 Elizabeth Warren. Um, gosh, that would be a rough, rough four years if it were Biden and Elizabeth Warren. And you know she would have just his gonads in a vice. There's no way he'd be making actual decisions if she's on there. She's wearing those pants, don't you think? Absolutely. Although, remember, Barack Obama for years has said, oh, I can win a third third term. And he just said it a couple weeks ago. Again, that is a very revealing tell whenever he says that. He needs a third term and obviously can't run, although he shredded the Constitution in every other way. Right. But – uh, he needs somebody he can control, and he knows that he can control Biden. Biden will be a handmaiden to Barack Obama. He'll do whatever, you know, he's not going to reverse anything. He's not going to sing to his own playbook. He will sing according to the Obama playbook, and Obama knows that. I think that's a good I don't think it's necessarily wrong for Barack Obama to think he could win a third term, though. As much as it pains me to say it, I, I, I do think if, if he were able to run, the guy is so good at campaigning and everything is in such disarray right now. I wouldn't be surprised if he were to I know I know that sounds sacrilegious. I'm not saying I'd like it. I don't think he's entirely wrong in that statement. Am I out of line? No, no. I mean, look, if he could do it, if he could pull it off, and, and like I said, he's ravaged the Constitution in every way possible before this. So if he thought he could do it, he would. He would. Um, and that would, of course, annoy Bill Clinton who has been agitating for a change in the 22nd Amendment so he could run for a third term. Right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Gosh. Well, I mean, if Hillary <laughs> goes in, it might as well. I, I don't know. I don't really know. A lot of people thought he would be pulling the strings with Hillary. I think it was more so she was pulling the strings with him back then. I mean, not only is she obviously, by the way, I'm not entirely convinced that Hillary Clinton is interested in men. Just so Monica Crowley didn't say it, just for the record, I would not be. Let's be honest here. No one would be surprised, right? If Hillary Clinton were done with her political career and it came out that she had some secret lover named Ethel, we'd all go, yeah, sure. It doesn't surprise us. She clearly wasn't interested in her husband and he clearly was clearly a marriage of convenience. I don't think anybody would be surprised. Just like I don't think anyone would be surprised if Al Gore's, the, the masseuses he was turning out to, turned out to be men. But I do think that Hillary Clinton was pulling the strings more so with Bill. And it's because she had so much leverage on him with not just the Lewinsky thing. People forget that it was borderline sexual, aggravated sexual assault with the other women who came forward. uh, And Hillary knew about it. So you don't think she was able to get her way? I mean, my wife, you know, can get her way with me if I forget to do the dishes or something because I'll feel bad and I want to make sure that, you know, I please her later on. You don't think Hillary Clinton has the kind of leverage where she can make him do whatever she wants when she knows yeah, there's a sexual yeah. harassment lawsuit? Oh, 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 absolutely. And I think that's why he gave her the whole health care portfolio in 93 yeah. and 94. It was like to placate her, get her out of his hair, you know, go and do your thing. This is a major policy initiative. Go and do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Do you yeah. think he's really a vegan? Do you think Bill Clinton is really a vegan now? Uh, yeah, because he looks kind of frail and pale. <laughs> so I don't think he's. I don't think he's consuming any. Meat. Right, I know you have to go soon. Let me ask you this though. Last time, it's totally un- unpolitically related. Last time I saw you, you were wearing those, uh, those, those, those shoes, those fitness shoes, those like Skechers. You still doing that deal? I love Skechers. <laughs> I, le- I, I, yeah, I have their sneakers, their walking shoes, and their flats. Well, what yeah. was it though? That shoe that was like the big trend. It was like an. Ex- it was supposed to work out your your. Oh, yeah, the butt, right. But then there was a lawsuit against Skechers saying it was an unverifiable claim, so they had to take it away. But I have to say, my butt's looking pretty fierce, so I think it might be working. Good for you, but how dare you 
um, play, how dare you play the butt card as a woman and then <laughs> you know you're going to get the backlash. With the Megyn Kelly thing, that was the... Now, do you do Kelly's show uh, very often? I know you do Bill's show, so I, I know I have to be careful with this. Do you do her show very often? Once in a while. Once in a while. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not a huge fan. I'm not a huge fan because after I left Fox News, she says, some guy, and I sat across from her many times there, some guy did some online video. That's what the problem with media now is no one can play nice with each other. But uh, the one thing is I think it was an appropriate question. Do you think it might have been better played for her to come out and speak against the people kind of playing the delicate flower, she's a woman, Trump was out of line? Because it seemed like a lot of people were saying, listen, she's a strong woman, why doesn't she handle herself with this? There just seemed to be an awkward silence when that was going on. Is there something we don't know about? Well, Megyn Kelly's a big girl. Uh, she's tough as nails, so I'm not really worried about her. I actually focus more on Donald Trump, and I think the way he should have answered that question was, you know what, Megyn, first of all, I can't remember any of those quotes. Secondly, if they are attributable to me, uh, I'd like to hear the whole context, because we know about the one about a woman on her knees was taken completely out of context. That's true. It was about begging him for a job, not, you know, sexual, sexually servicing him. And the third point I would say was, I would have looked at her and said, Megan, if you want to talk about the mistreatment of women, I'm happy to talk about ISIS selling women into sex slavery or the Taliban shooting Malala in the head because she demanded education. Any of those issues I'm happy to talk about. Why don't you run for office? Would you vote for me? Yes, I'd vote. Well, I'd vote for you on the butt alone, according to you. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? I need to get a deal with Skechers. Yes, yeah, well, Skechers. yeah, they get rid of Kim Kardashian. She's just, <laughs> she was there for a while. I don't know if she still, that's a good point. But do you, okay, last question. We'll let you go. Obviously, people are talking about this. When he said, or whatever, do you think it was a uh, menstrual joke, or do you think he just, just wasn't sharp enough to go through his mental Rolodex and say, um, no's? Look, I don't know. All I know is when I'm on, you know, radio or television or something, you, your mind is working so fast, especially in a pressure cooker like a d debate or, you know, on a television interview. I, I, you know, given what I know about Donald Trump, I do not think he would be that crass. Um, so I actually think he was like in the middle of a thought and then jumped to the next thought. Um, and it, it, it came out that way. I do not think – I actually take his explanation at face value. I don't think he was going there. I think he, he meant, you know, nose, other orifice of her head, you know, bleeding out of the head and that kind of thing. I, it was a totally Just get him the kindergarten – say, but, get yeah, him, that's it. Get him the kindergarten songbook, head and shoulders, knees and toes, eyes, ears, mouth, and nose. I want our, <laughs> I want our president to at least be able to go through a preschool nursery rhyme Rolodex of words so that he can pick the right one. So either way, isn't that a little bit of an issue? I know. Look, look, would I have said those things? No. But I also <laughs> think, again, I keep getting back to, I think a lot of voters look at him and go, he's a little bit of an a-hole. He's a little <laughs> bit of a jerk. But you know what? That could make him a really great president. That's oh, all I'm okay. going to say. No, I think well-worded, very clever. Um, we tried to get the, uh, the, 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 back, the back talk out of Monica Crowley and Classy, as always. Read her columns, Washington Times, every Thursday, right, Monica? Yes, every Thursday, WashingtonTimes.com. I've got an interview with Carly Fiorina this week. Oh, well, we had her last week, so tell her I say hello, and I'm interested to see what she does. And uh, we'll have you back sometime with Skype because everyone wants to see your, you know, every come on, that's a big selling point for I, these. I know, I know. I can't even turn on my TV. But, okay, we will <laughs> we will work on Skype. I'll make you, uh, make you walk me through installing it and getting it up and running. Okay. okay? Thank you All so right. much, Monica. Lotter with Crowder. Stay tuned. If you like this video, subscribe by clicking my face or watch one of these videos next to me. Or go to ladderwithcrowder.com for a bunch of stuff that you can't find on YouTube. If you don't, the next video will be me and lingerie doing stuff. Weird stuff. And I don't mean the kind of weird stuff that's FCC okay when you pitch it to writers and say, is this weird enough but kind of weird okay for TV? I'm talking internet dark corner weird stuff.